Welcome in, everybody, to uh, the the next installment of Pop-Up Bible Study. I have Jew here. Uh, Jew, why don't you introduce yourself to the people? Okay, so I'm Jew. If uh, we haven't met, I'm part of the Restore Leadership Team. I work over in Enfield and have the pleasure of being the location leader for the Albany location. If you've not found us yet, we're on the Hartford Road, uh, just off the A10, and we would love for you to come and visit us sometimes. Um, I'm also mum to Martha and wife to Lloyd. Um, I'm very fortunate. We live over in Waltham Abbey and um, yeah, they give me a lot of, of joy. And then my kind of guilty pleasure is to read. Um, I know I meant to say read the Bible, which I do do, <laughs> but I also like to read crime fiction. So, you know, the, the Jack Reachers and things of this world oh. are, um, are, my, are my guilty pleasure. Um yeah, and that's me. I love theatre. I like going out to dinner with friends. All the, all the normal stuff. Okay, I'm sure Agatha Christie. What about the other Jack? Uh, Jack Ryan. Yes, do a okay. bit of Jack Ryan. Yeah, okay. yeah, partial to that, and then sort of. If I'm going a bit more old school, I might do a bit of Rebus. Okay. Or, yeah, mm. something like that. So theatre, what, what's a recent theatre production you've... Ooh, do you know what? It's been ages since I've got to the theatre, but I do love, um, I love musical theatre, most mm. of all. Um, so I'm a sucker for... The lame is and the Miss Saigons of this world. Okay. Um, but yeah, don't get a chance to go often I get enough. That, yeah. But, I, yeah. I enjoy a good musical. Um, I recently saw the Mean Girls movie oh, okay. musical, mm -hmm. which I really enjoyed. Um, but I didn't really grow up with them at all, so it's like a late introduction. The only okay. musical I watched growing up outside of a Disney film was Grease 2. Oh, oh I, Grease 2. I prefer Grease 2 over Grease oh, 1. Oh, you heard it here first. <laughs> He's a cool rider. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you got it. You're there with me. Uh, but anyway, we're actually here today because we're doing a pop-up Bible study because uh, I don't know about you too, but sometimes I read the Bible and I get really confused or like, what is that? even mean that sentence I just read it feels like it went in one ear and out the other I don't nothing was captured in my brain um and I feel like I'm not the only one um so we're here to to really demystify to take all those things it's it's more simple than we think it is there's more tools out there for us especially with the internet um so what passage do we have here today so today we have a really well-known passage actually we have the passage of the Good Samaritan. Okay, Good Samaritan. Do you mind reading that for us? Not at all. So this is from Luke. I'll do it from the whole lead in if that's okay. All right. So Luke chapter 10, and we're going from verse 25. All right. On one occasion, an expert in the law stood up to test Jesus. Teacher, he asked, what must I do to inherit eternal life? What is written in the law, he replied. How do you read it? He answered, love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength and with all your mind and love your neighbor as yourself. You've answered correctly, Jesus replied. Do this and you will live. But he wanted to justify himself. So he asked Jesus, and who is my neighbor? In reply, Jesus said, a man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho when he fell into the hands of robbers. They stripped him of his clothes, beat him and went away, leaving him half dead. A priest happened to be going down the same road, and when he saw the man, he passed by on the other side. So too a Levite, when he came to the place and saw him, passed by on the other side. But a Samaritan, as he travelled, came where the man was, and when he saw him, he took pity on him. He went to him and bandaged his wounds, pouring on oil and wine. Then he put the man on his own donkey, brought him to an inn, and took care of him. The next day he took out two silver coins and gave them to the innkeeper. Look after him, he said, and when I return, I will reimburse you for any extra expenses you may have. Which of these three do you think was a neighbour to the man who fell into the hands of robbers? The expert in the law replied, the one who had mercy on him. Jesus told him, go and do likewise. Okay, I, so imagine Jew, this is the first time you've ever read this passage. What does Jew Hodges do from this point on? 
Okay, well, this is a well-known passage, so I think you've been quite kind, to, <laughs> quite kind to me on this one. Um, but let's assume it wasn't quite as well-known as it is. Um, I think initially it's always good to read a passage two or three times. Mm-hmm. Um, and I often will read something and go away from it for a while and mm. then come back a few days later and okay. read it again. And in that time, I often find that things that I'm doing, conversations I have with people... Um, illustrations of what it is that I've read in the passage seem Mm. to appear to me. Okay. Um, And so it sort of brings it alive a little bit. Um, I think then in terms of going deeper with the passage, um, for a start, I always read things in my NIV version here. Okay. Um, So so why? Yeah, I'm aware that the NIV for a lot of people isn't necessarily the most um, accurate translation, if you like. There are other translations that scholars would, would say are more Um, more accurate to original text but this particular bible i've had for many many years and it is well thumbed and it has traveled it's always with me Um, and it's the one where i've got the most notes where i've underlined things where people have perhaps given me prophecies or words from scripture and so my go-to is often this um this bible begin to begin with because if it's a passage i've ever heard taught on before then Mm -hmm. i may well have something written in it or underlined um, so I tend to always go there as my starting point. That's a, that's a good enough um, reason for yeah. any. <laughs> I then might read it in some other translations. Mm-hmm. Um, so I may use some more scholarly versions. I may also go to something like the Passion, mm-hmm. um, just because sometimes I find the passage translation is very evocative, very emotive, and it mm-hmm. might just stir something in my spirit. So it mm-hmm. may not be about an accuracy translation issue, but it may just um, stir something I find. Yeah. Um, And then obviously there are resources out there that are really helpful. So I particularly like Tom Wright or when he writes as N.T. Wright. Um, So his commentaries um, that he wrote a few years ago now said there's a book called, for example, Luke for Everyone. He's done all the Gospels and all the Mm. New Testament books. Um, They are really great little reads. And so if I was looking at something like this passage, I would go to to the commentary there and see that. Um, but But likewise, online, there are obviously lots of really helpful online commentaries as well i think it's just a case of being mindful mm. of um which particular scholars you might be looking for and i think talking to other people um you know blessed to be able to spend time with people like ian so mm. i often might chat about a passage with ian and discuss it with the staff team or even go to somebody like graham 12 tree we've got people in our congregation who are incredibly scholarly so particularly mm. if it was a new testament passage that i was struggling with i might go to somebody like that to have a, a chat about it yeah, exactly i mean we're, we're kind of spoiled for spoiled options for choice. <laughs> uh graham 12 tree alone like one of the <laughs> the premier professors at the london school of theology uh, if, if you got a question about yep. anything scriptural they i assure you he's the man to go to he for is. sure i had a question just last week about something and he was able to open up the greek to me and explain something that mm. In our translations, we would just normally have missed. So, exactly. Yeah, I do yeah. recommend that. So, so w- with this passage, what's one of the first things that kind of jumps out at you, of like, oh, this, this, I kind of see exactly what God is getting at mm-hmm. here. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, this passage is very well known. It's the it's the passage that, you know, primary schools will act out in assembly to yeah. teach them all to be kind to one another. Um, it's that kind of passage. And the fact that we even have the phrase Good Samaritan as part of our language, you know, mm. we'll, we'll, people will say, oh, you, you're a Good Samaritan. Mm. And actually, without even realizing sometimes that they're referencing this scripture. Um, I think here for me, there are a number of things. Um, one is that, obviously, the context of the story. So... Mm. Jesus is being essentially challenged by somebody who's trying to be difficult, trying to trip him up. Um, And initially Jesus goes back to the Old Testament. So I'd look at where he quotes from. So he quotes from, in this particular instance, Deuteronomy and also Leviticus when he's talking about to love God and to love your neighbor. Um, So it's always good to go back to the the Old Testament passages that Jesus often references. Um, And then I think, there's a danger here um, and the danger is that when we question Jesus he will answer us <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like th- these kind of passages should come with a health warning right because exactly. because the guy says to Jesus well who is my neighbor mm-hmm. and by the end of the passage he probably thought I really wish I hadn't asked mm-hmm. um, because he was doing it to be difficult not to go deeper with with God um, and so Jesus tells us this parable in response to that but of course here we have Jesus making the hero of the story um, somebody who the answer of the question would have really disliked. Mm. Um, I don't like to go as far as hated, but historically, obviously, the Jews and the Samaritans had a very difficult history. There'd Mm. been a lot of bloodshed over many generations. Mm. And so 
the fact that we have a a priest and a Levite, you know, people who knew the law, teachers of the law, mm -hmm. people who were um, essentially employed to bring people into the presence of God in yeah. the temple, actually are walking past this person. Um, and even worse than that, that the hero of the story is is a member of the hated race. Who would be seen as the villain of any other story. Absolutely. You know, they, I'm sure they would tell little kids the mean things Samaritans would do, so you better behave. Absolutely. So. Yeah, absolutely. So I think they would have just been mad at Jesus even for considering him to, to be the, to yeah. be the hero. Um, I also think in this story there's a couple of unsung heroes, one of which is certainly the innkeeper. Mm -hmm. So we have the uh, we have the good Samaritan being prepared to bandage him and put him on his donkey mm -hmm. and take him to the inn. But I've often wondered, you know, if somebody brought somebody to your house or to your business or to your place of work who was battered and bruised and bleeding and who possibly wasn't necessarily that nice a guy themselves. Like they were traveling on a road that was known for bandits yeah. and, you know, they'd chosen <laughs> to take that, that road, um, which was a notorious road. Um, and they've turned upon your doorstep and, you know, how, how welcoming are we to that? How mm. easy would it have been for the innkeeper to say, actually, I've got no room tonight yeah. because he may have been thinking, I don't want to bring trouble yeah. to this place. Um, but the innkeeper actually takes him in and is prepared to look after him on behalf of somebody who he trusts is going to come back and, and pay the rest of the bill. Mm -hmm. So actually I think the innkeeper, um, perhaps reveals something about our own hearts and whether actually when people are brought to us, if we perhaps considered the inn as the church, if yeah. somebody brought somebody sort of metaphorically wounded to the church, how open are we to receiving them or exactly. how quickly do we judge why they might be in the situation that they're in? Exactly. Or do we think about like, man, but I got lunch coming up. I don't yeah. really want to yeah. mess with it. Yeah. For real petty things, we, we do that. I've done that. Like, yep. yeah, but I want to go see a movie at like four. And I kind of want just my downtime. Yeah. Something that silly I've done before. And and so the idea of just kind of being ready at all points that God, mm. people are hurting. God wants to help them. Mm. Guess who's the instrument of that help a lot of the time? It's his children here on earth. Absolutely. Um, yeah. And so I... I, like you said with the innkeeper, I see myself as mm. the innkeeper a lot. And I'm like, okay, do I, do I have that same heart mm. all the time? Mm. And uh, mm. I don't know if I do all the time. Mm. Yeah, and then similarly with the, with the Good Samaritan, yes, he picks him up and he takes him there. Um, but I think it's also worth reminding us that he then finances mm -hmm. the help that he's not able to give. Mm -hmm. And sometimes God might give us a heart and a passion for something or a compassion for something and we ourselves don't have the time or maybe the skills to do it, yeah. but he may have blessed us with the finance to mm -hmm. enable somebody else to do it. Mm -hmm. And so here, the Good Samaritan isn't able to care for him himself. Presumably he was on his way somewhere or he had things to do, mm -hmm. but actually what he is able to do is finance somebody who can. Mm -hmm. um, and I think it's a good reminder that as, as people who follow Jesus, when he says, go and do likewise, it, it's sometimes about actually financing mm. um, projects and, and things that can help people when yeah. we perhaps ourselves can't do it directly. Mm -hmm. I, I think of uh, <clears throat> back in America, I would listen to a lot of sports radio and there was a guy on there. I can't remember his name, just a normal sports commentator. Um, and as far as I know, not a Christian and never on air did he say that he's a follower of Christ. But he would told this story over the course of years about how he took in a homeless guy from the streets of Houston. And first it was just giving him a home because he was like, I have, a, I have a spare house in my back yard. You know, like yards in Houston are huge. So he's like, I have the spare house, basically. So I let him stay there for a few weeks. And then I got to know the guy. And then I was like, oh, I want to extend more help to him. And so... It was, he started the years long process of this guy has no identification whatsoever, no birth certificate, no social security oh, card, yeah. no driver's license, no passport, no oh. nothing. And so from literally the basement floor of building this life, this guy's life back together. And I keep thinking, man, that's the most Christ-like thing I've ever heard a person do. Yeah. And I don't even know if he knows Jesus. Yeah. Um, and I was thinking, could I like God, is that what I'm supposed to be doing? Mm. Um, and you read this story and go, the go and do likewise. You're yeah. like, well, maybe I don't have the house in my back garden, but maybe I have some change in my pocket that could help 
in certain instances like that. That's the lesson I kind of take away from it. Uh, is there anything else that kind of pops um, for you? I think, I think the last thing is probably when, um, when Jesus at the end of the story turns back to the, the guy that had originally asked the question mm. um, and he, he turns back and says, you know, so who do you think was the neighbor in this story? Right. And it's the fact that his response is the one who had mercy on him. Mm -hmm. And I always feel like he can't even bring himself to say mm -hmm. the Samaritan. Yeah. It's really interesting, I think, that he doesn't reference mm -hmm. who the person was. He just says the one who had mercy on him. Right. And it's just, you can you kind of feel that it was through gritted teeth. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you know? Um and sometimes I think it goes back to that question. If we're going to ask Jesus serious questions mm. like, who is my neighbor? Mm. Be prepared for the response to be something that may not be comfortable. Exactly. Um, because, yeah, these were people who had fought for a long time. There was some serious history. Exactly. And it's not just about, you know, Jesus asking to care for our neighbor. He's actually asking us to care for anyone mm -hmm. who needs it. Yeah. And, uh, you know, our, our strap line is we welcome everyone, but actually everyone is really difficult. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, and uh, we often have, you know, prejudice and biases and things that we don't even realize we have mm -hmm. um, or for all sorts of reasons find it mm -hmm. tricky to welcome people. And yet this passage is, is just that reminder that, that neighbor really is all inclusive. Yeah. Even when it's uncomfortable, even when it's costly. Mm -hmm. um, so for me, I think one of my my new takeaways from the story is just be careful what you ask <laughs> exactly because jesus will answer you <laughs> and it may not be comfortable yeah i've had i've had a mentor for 15 years and he told me growing up with his mom who is like a very strict individual but in in a good kind of strict if i can say that not like mm -hmm. A crushing strictness but a, a guiding keeping you safe bumpers in a bowling alley kind of strict mm -hmm. and she'd always say jason be careful with the questions you ask because you might not be ready for the answer. Mm. And so I've like, that always kind of resonated with sometimes you hear something mm. and it kind of like ripples through you like, Oh, there's, there's something really deep there. Mm. Um, and so I've always like, Oh God, some of the things I ask you, am I even ready for the action of it? Mm. Of like, God, give me this opportunity. Am I ready for the opportunity yeah. sort of thing? So I think you're right, drawing that from the lesson here. Uh, and one thing you were talking about, the reading there, I think this is a great example of Jesus can be a little, a little, I would say saucy, but not in like a drink <laughs> sort of way, but he is being a little cheeky here he of like, well, who would you think the neighbor is? Like he's somewhat... Yeah, he's provoking him. Because in the very beginning, he says, what is written in the law? How do you read it? Like, what is your understanding, Mr. Smarty Pants, mm -hmm. of the law? And then I'll actually break it down from there. And then, so, and he kind of treats him like a kid in that mm -hmm. moment. Like, you think you know it all, Mr. Grown-Up, but what's the real answer there? Mm -hmm. um, and so I kind of like that reading the story of like, Jesus, yes, he's God, but he's also man at the same time. And sometimes we need to be spoken to in a cheeky manner of like, yeah, you're right. I, I know the answer in, in my head. I just have not fully accepted it yet. Uh, maybe there's a journey that the Samaritan went on thereafter. Um, and maybe that's just putting myself in the story a little too much. Um, but I do think it's, it's a great story. Uh, and I like what you, you brought to the table here. Um, so what, what's something for Jew that you say feeds you uh, that I, the American saying is, what would bless your soul? Okay. Uh, <laughs> is there something you're reading, you're listening um, to? Yeah, so I'm currently reading a book on revival, which is mm. just a really good reminder of some of the um, revivals of the past that have mm. begun with often small numbers of often seemingly insignificant people on mm. their knees in prayer and just a reminder of the the power of prayer yeah. to bring revival mm. um so that's one thing i've also been uh, looking at a lot of the bridgetown teaching mm. so bridgetown church in the states has a, a fantastic set of um recordings that you can listen to as podcasts or watch as videos um I have just been working on the Exodus series that's coming up after Easter. And so okay. I listened to a lot of their teaching on that. And I found that really, well, I said to somebody recently, I felt like I was, you know, binging a Netflix series. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Because it was really good. It was but, really good. So I would recommend any of their mm -hmm. their series, a, a thought-provoking. Mm -hmm. um, 
and then I think it's your it's your daily devotionals, isn't it? It's sometimes just the um, the short things that you're able to do. So whether it's listening to a, a Lectio 365 or whether it's yeah, yeah, yeah. a daily Bible reading app or mm. something that you can do sometimes on the go, things that you can can just keep you grounded during your day. Exactly, yeah. Okay, okay. Well, thank you so much for stopping by, Jude. You're very welcome. I, I hope the people at home have feel well equipped to you know next time they crack open their bible um or open their bible app that they they feel like they can understand better what they're reading that you know you you mentioned before that the bible kind of links itself together you you said that briefly mm-hmm. of this verse here he's like jesus references the old testament more so keeping that in mind mm-hmm. um in the context of like oh they call him a Samaritan. Does that even mean anything? Mm-hmm. And so th- there's more mm-hmm. in there yeah. that we just got to search for and find. So thank you so much for sharing with You're us. You're really welcome. Thank you for having me. Of course. We'll see you next time, guys.